Deepika, I just start the recording. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first talk of the last session today. And uh, so before uh, I introduce the speaker, I would like to list some thanks. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the RP 2023. So, uh, so this uh, program grow, grew very much and this is the third year. So with the organizers of this year, I think it beca became a tradition. So I would like to thank uh, uh, every one of them, especially like if, if I need to list the names. Uh, so Ulgan, Eda, Saikan, Dijle, Kürşat. So I, I, I thank you a lot. Uh, so I also want to especially thank the uh, Saikan and Eda because they are also there in person and dealing with the symposium. So thank you very much. And uh, so I also thank all the mentors and mentees for joining this year. So it, it has been a blast to uh, have social events and meet with you all. It was very nice. And finally, I would like to thank Hamid. So I think uh, uh, we we are matched very nicely and we uh, we had very nice and enjoyable uh, collaboration together. It was very nice to work with him. And so finally, so let me introduce him. So Hamid is from Boazic University. He's studying uh, electric electronic engineering together with mathematics. And today he will uh, talk about random walk and the heat equation. The floor is yours. Uh, I'd like to thank my mentors and all the organizers in advance for all their efforts to, throughout the summer. Um, in this talk, I'll try to give some insight about the probabilistic approach to the heat equation. So the heat equation is a deterministic equation, but we are going to try to solve it in a probabilistic way. Uh, we are going to model uh, heat as if it's uh, a collection of many number, uh, many heat particles. And the density of these heat particles gives the tem temperature at some point. Uh, so we'll focus on the movement of uh, these particles, uh, how these particles disperse, and uh, we are going to try to uh, find the mystery behind that. Uh, so we'll uh, go uh, in two steps. So in the first part, we'll uh, deal with the discrete domains. We'll deal with the discrete heat equation. Uh, and the uh, random walk, we'll see some properties of random walk and some interesting uh, results, maybe not directly to the heat equation, but worth seeing. Uh, and then we'll go to the next part, uh, the continuous part. We'll see the well known continuous heat equation and uh, we'll uh, try to solve it using the Brownian motion, actually, the continuous analog of random. So let's start with one dimensional simple random walk. Uh, Imagine we are on a number line, say uh, we start at zero. Uh, at each step, we go forward or backward. It's uh, equal probability. I think it's simple. If we are at zero at time zero, in the next uh, time instance, we will be on plus one or minus. Okay. Uh, we can uh, formulate this as uh, by saying uh, Sn denotes our position uh, at time n. Uh, little x denotes our uh, position at the start. Uh, but we'll usually start at zero. Uh, and the capital X subjects will denote the uh, direction of the step, uh, in this case, one or minus one. So uh, the above figure is a, a function of steps. Uh, it, presents the fun uh, it presents the random walk as a function of steps. So we are only interested in the points here. Don't get, get confused like uh, we follow the path. Uh, these are just calculations I made for visualization. Um, so which questions can be asked about the random walk by looking at this figure? Maybe we can uh, look for the average position, and we can look for the average distance to the start point, or uh, do we visit the starting point again? How many times we do it? Uh, what's the probability of the starting point? Uh, so let's start with the easier ones. Uh, just a quick reminder of expectation. So uh, we start at zero, we are on one dimension, our expected position is zero. So this is an expected result because uh, the steps uh, to the positive side or the negative side are equal like that. So these two cancel each other. Uh, so we can be on the positive side or negative side. Uh, the, uh, the average of the position is zero. Uh, for the distance, we can use the absolute value, but uh, for computational ease, uh, we use the square of the uh, position. So that comes out as n. 
So we say that our distance to the starting point uh, grows like root of n. So uh, also for random walk starting at zero, this corresponds to the variance uh, because this part is zero. Our uh, expectation of s sub n is zero. Uh, just keep this in mind because uh, we'll see some resemblance in the Brownian motion, and I think that's nice. Uh, okay, so we know uh, that the average position is zero, but what about the actual probability to be at zero at some time? So to be at zero, uh, if a walker starts at zero, uh, the walker should go n steps forward and n steps back. So we need an even number of steps. Uh, actually, this is true for all, all, all even numbered index points. So uh, the probability is found by uh, this expression. So these one over twos uh, denote the probabilities of the steps. Uh, this is the forward step, this is the back step. So this uh, two and choose n term denotes the steps which we can go forward. So the remaining steps will be the backward step. Okay, uh, this is simple. Uh, for any other uh, even numbered index point, uh, we can do the same by saying that we go m plus j steps forward and m minus j steps backward. So the uh, difference is Okay. And similarly, we choose the step that we go forward and the remaining will be backward. So we have some factorials here. Uh, we may know the behavior of factorials for uh, smaller numbers, but uh, we may need the, this behavior when n tends to infinity. For that, we will use the Stirling's formula. Uh, Stirling's formula basically says that as n tends to infinity, this ratio goes to 1. So uh, there is no need to go much to detail. Uh, we'll just apply this to our probability to be as zero at time two n, and it comes out as one over root of pi n. Uh, pi is not uh, important right now, just uh, remember this is of order one over root of n. So how can we use this formula? Uh, we can actually uh, look for the widths to the zero because uh, we know the probability to be at zero at some point. So if we take infinite steps, uh, how many times do we resist zero? Uh, I pointed out the resist to zero uh, in the first graph, uh, in first figure. So it seems pretty frequent, but is it always, always like this? So let's formulate this question. Uh, let's say V is the total number of visits to zero. It's not uh, And uh, J sub two and uh, actually counts our uh, it takes the value of one if we are at zero at the origin, uh, and it takes the value of zero otherwise. So uh, we may want to actually we want to take the expectation of the uh, total number of visits. So this is the expectation of a sum. So expectation is a linear operator. So this corresponds to the sum of expectations. So uh, we need the expectation of j sub two n. Uh, actually, it is the probability of that event. Uh, uh, maybe a detail, but this is called a, a, an indicator function. The expectation of indicator functions is equal to the probability of the event they indicate. So uh, take this uh, as my word. So uh, now we know this probability from the previous slide. Uh, and we know that uh, we will uh, sum these probabilities. Uh, so it is an infinite sum of uh, n over one, minus 1 over 2. So we know that this sum actually diverges by the p-test. So our result is that our expected visits to the origin for a one-dimensional simple random model is infinite. So this is interesting. Uh, actually, we can go further. Uh, we can uh, say that x denotes the probability that the walker ever returns to the origin. Uh, after some computations, this comes out. Uh, so we know that this is infinite. So uh, for this to be infinite, Q should be one. Oh, uh, Q is equal to one. So a random walker in a one-dimensional uh, uh, environment, uh, wherever it is, it will definitely return to the origin again. Uh, this is true for one-dimensional random walk, but it is not true for every dimension. So because we uh, Got this, got this result from uh, the probability of uh, being at zero. Uh, yeah. It was n over one mi uh, minus one over two. For d dimensions, it, uh, it changes. It becomes n over minus d over. 
So for two-dimensional animal, again, uh, the sum uh, diverges because the infinite sum of one over n diverges. Uh, but after three, uh, the sum starts to converge. So this means that our uh, expectation is normal infinite. So the Q value is normal equal to one. So there is a positive probability that the walker may never return to the origin again. Uh, and this is actually expectable because in a three-dimensional uh, domain, there are many possible directions the, that the walker may go, uh, and it's uh, visually expectable. This may return to origin again, but after some point, we know that uh, it won't uh, return to origin. So we can gather these in, an, uh, in a theorem by saying that for one and two dimensional animal, the walk is said to be recurrent. Uh, with probability one, it returns to the origin infinitely often. Uh, but after three dimensions, there is a phase transition. Uh, the behavior of the walker changes, and uh, the walker starts to not return to the origin. The random walk is said to be transient. Uh, with probability one, it returns to the origin only finitely often. So this is uh, described in a beautiful way by Shijiro Kakutani, uh, as he said. A drunk man who travels in a two-dimensional map actually will find his way home definitely. But a drunk bird uh, who travels in a three-dimensional environment may get lost forever. So um, let's move on to the main part of our presentation. Uh, as I said, we can model the heat uh, as a collection of uh, heat particles. And we say that these heat particles uh, perform random walks uh, on our domain. Uh, so imagine that uh, um, uh, we have heat on the origin, and uh, after the time zero, the heat starts to disperse. Uh, these particles start to uh, spread uh, among the object. Uh, so let's formalize this too by saying that uh, the temperature is given by the density of particles at x uh, at time n by uh, and denoted by u sub n of x. So let's move further uh, and say that at the next time instance, the temperature at point x will be the average of the neighboring points. So if this doesn't seem obvious to you at the first book, uh, let's try it this way. Uh, take two dimensional plane, uh, take an x, take a neighbor of x. We know that uh, there are many particles uh, there and they do random. So we know that uh, a random walker moves to each direction with equal probability. So for a two-dimensional plane, the random walker at y uh, will go to the x with probability of uh, 1 over 4. So a quarter of particles at y will go to x at the next time. So this is true for all uh, uh, neighbors of x. So when we uh, sum this up, we arrive at this one. So this is the mean value property of the uh, heat. Uh, we need a relationship between the change in time and change in position for heat equation. So we actually subtract uh, u sub n of x uh, and u sub n. Uh, and this is actually equal to the difference between the neighbors of x and the uh, original value at x. So, and we denote it by uh, L, and uh, it is a discrete Laplacian. So remember the continuous Laplacian in the heat equation. Uh, so the left-hand side is a uh, function of time. The right-hand side is a, a function of position. So actually, we got what we want. We have a relationship between the change in time and change in position. So let's move on for some explicit solutions. Let's say that our initial condition is 1 at x and 0 otherwise. Uh, so, the fraction of uh, particles that go from x to some another point at some time will depend on the probability of a random walker uh, starting at x to go to some point at some time. So, uh, the total number of points will be the points times the probability. So, we have one uh, particle in this scenario. So, the temperature will be given by just the probability of a random walker at x to be at y at the nth step. Um, so this is a uh, explicit solution for our heat equation. Now this concludes our uh, discrete part. Uh, we actually uh, build some uh, background for the continuous part. If, if you haven't lost me, that's really fine. If you have lost me, don't worry because uh, you can catch us up uh, in the continuous part. Uh, so let's move to the continuous part. 
Uh, for the continuous analog, we will need the continuous analog of random. Uh, that's called the Brownian motion. Uh, it was first uh, formally expressed by a botanist called Robert Brown uh, in 1827 when he observed pollen grains uh, moving in the water with his microscope. Uh, it was mathematically expressed in a formal way in the late 19th centuries, in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Uh, it has a wide uh, uh, use of area. So, uh, because it's a national term, we can uh, directly uh, observe it. Uh, so, as I said, this is the continuous analog of random mode. We take the limit of random mode as the time and space increments go to zero. So, uh, this is a figure that represents a random motion in one dimension. So, remember the first figure uh, in the first slide. Uh, there, we were only interested in the points. We were not uh, following the path uh, that I, I said that I, uh, I interpolated. Uh, so in this case, we are on a continuous domain, so we follow this path. We are uh, moving a continuous random. So uh, let's uh, see some properties about the brown motion. Uh, we'll denote the position of the brown motion uh, at time t by w sub t. So the first property gives the, uh, that uh, our position has a normal distribution with mean zero and variant t. So remember the random old case, uh, we, our uh, mean for the, uh, our expectation for the S sub n was zero. So mean is zero. Uh, variance was, uh, variance for S sub n was n. So variance for uh, W sub t is t. So actually our speed is uh, same uh, for both cases. Um, so uh, our next uh, property is a direct consequence of uh, a normal distribution. Uh, this random variable, WT minus WS, uh, has a, a distribution with mean zero and variance T minus S. So if uh, T and S are close to each other, this becomes uh, near to zero. So actually we want a smaller step, a step uh, of length near to zero. Uh, and next property is a, a nice property that says that uh, this step uh, is independent, independent of all the random variables uh, before S. So when you uh, get to a point, uh, you can deem the, like your new origin. You start a new motion and you can forget about the past and uh, do your operations uh, according to that point. Uh, okay, now we'll move on the continuous integration. Uh, so uh, similar setup, we're uh, still uh, dealing with heat particles. Uh, we are only on the continuous domain and our particles do round the motion instead of random. Uh, let's give our initial temperature with f of y. Uh, again, we know that a fraction of these particles will, will move to x by time t. Uh, and this will depend on some probability. So let's uh, denote that probability by p. Um, so for the temperature at x, we need to take the average of all y in our domain. So we do that like this. Uh, so for all y in our domain, uh, we take the integral of this expression. So this is the uh, number of particles at y at the starting point, uh, at the uh, starting time. Uh, so this is the probability of a particle to go to x by time t. So this uh, uh, multiplication gives the result of uh, how many particles uh, at y will go to x by time t. So uh, and this is uh, expressed in a, in a uh, expectation of the operator with by uh, this expression. So we want this to satisfy the original well-known heat equation that we were taught in uh, differential equations class. So let's mind that uh, we want this to satisfy this. So let's take uh, the derivative of, of this expression uh, with respect to time. So uh, we'll assume that uh, we start at uh, time zero, position zero, and we'll uh, assume that at position zero, at time zero, there, won't, there will be no particles, uh, and we'll fix our domain one. Uh, let's write the definition of the derivative. Uh, this is the uh, time part of uh, our temperature, so we take the derivative with respect to time. Uh, so we know that this is zero, so we assume that. Uh, this cancels out. So we know that this can be written as this uh, from the previous slide, uh, and then we'll do it by S. Uh, so let's do some computation. Uh, let's say that 
f is c squared. That is, uh, f is twice continuous with differential. Uh, so we take this Taylor expansion uh, by this. Then we take the expectation of this expansion. So uh, we know that expectation is a, a linear operator. So we can take the expectation of uh, these uh, separately. Yeah. So uh, we know these values, uh, expectation of the position and its square. Uh, we know that uh, this is zero and this is S. And we also know that uh, we will uh, divide this uh, by S. Uh, and what we have is this cancels out. This is uh, divided by S and goes to one. Uh, we have the second derivative of at F at zero over two is equal to the uh, derivative with respect to time. So this is a function of position because this is the initial te temperature at all points. So this is a uh, function of position and this is a derivative with respect to position. This is the second derivative with respect to position. So uh, we do similar things for all t and x, then we arrive at what we want. Uh, we have a, a relationship between the change in time and change in position. So we can generalize this uh, for d dimensions uh, and we can use the Laplacian operator here. Uh, and um, that's all for uh, our operation. We arrive at a uh, deterministic equation by totally using probability. Uh, and actually, this adds a layer of richness uh, in terms of uh, movements of in the, uh, individual particles. Uh, and it helps us to understand the meaning and this equation. Uh, so that's all from me. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Hamid. Nice.